Super G races all on the same Rock de Fair racetrack. It's getting a little slick and rough, particularly on the lower section of the piece. Here is the first of the five Swiss skiers in the race today. This is Jasmine Fleury, 28-year-old from Davos. 22nd position for Jasmine in the Super G was a little disappointing. She has a PB Finley of fourth on the World Cup Tour in her favourite race of St. Moritz. If she can find anything like that kind of form, she'll be in the chase. But no better than sixth in training. Jasmine really does need to raise her game today. Skiing well in the opening turns and the skis are running fast. They have tenth of a second up on the green light. And then the change of style in the track. You go from those open tuck turns to more terrain, having to press the end of the traverse. And that's a better line there, much tighter in. 0.3 of a second now up. And I like the fact that uh, Jasmine looking a lot more aggressive here. Those three practice sessions before the big race today have given a lot of the skiers extra confidence. So rarely this season have we had a perfect weather conditions across a seven day period. And she's still digging deep, really charging. She was able to have a very tight line through Prakua. Held the early line and was able to get it back into the tuck early. 0.68 now at the top of the stad. Brilliant skiing and a stark difference. You can see on the screen that she looks more aggressive, more hungry than the Austrian racer before her. Fleury takes the lead and the margin is impressive. Over half a second, the right side of the clock for Jasmine Fleury. And I'm really impressed the way she's come much more confident and aggressively to the racetrack today than she demonstrated in her three practice runs. This is the best skiing we've seen from Fleury all week. It was a dynamic moves that she made onto that new turning ski. The ski coming around quickly, able to hold on to the tight lines, not skiing any extra meters. Done it, but done it in the biggest race of the year, the World Championships. We wait patiently. Five is Nina Ortlieb of the Austrian team. Her father, Patrick Ortlieb, won the downhill gold in this valley back in 1992 on the Fast de Belvoir in Val d'Isère. Now, Patrick Ortlieb is watching on as his daughter, Nina. Good form on the World Cup Tour. She's had a couple of heavy crashes and come Rocks better than from... arcing and cutting cleanly through the icy mountain snow. The Goulet is the narrow, dark section of the track. Now onto the last pitch. Uh, Nina Ortlieb takes this very close. Nina Ortlieb of the Austrian team just about holds her position. She's looking a little tired, drops low and late in the line. Two from home. Ortlieb has just lost it. Oh, Nina, what a shame. Four hundredths off the pace of Jasmine Fleury. Just looking a little tired. Didn't have the power to hold the ski in the closing turns. You can see how physically tired she was in the finish area. Great work on the upper section. Just a few slid turns, especially that entrance to the parkour. Here's the big pre-race favorite, Sofia Goggia of the Italian team. The Olympic downhill champion of 2018, silver medalist of 2022. Deeply upset and struggling with her emotions, I think it's fair to say, after the sad passing of Elena Fanchini earlier this week. But what Goggia has, Finley, is this magic ability to just get that head down and dig deep when it's the big day and the big moment. She's never won a World Championship downhill medal. She's won the World Cup Tour title three times and she's going to win it for a fourth by the end of this season. But this is Goggia going through the gears and going top speed on the early part of the championship. Challenge. Pure focus Heavy for Goggia. Slammed, you saw her head moving forwards and down as she landed through the Ghoulie dark section. And 600s now on the stats. Oh no! Oh! Goggia almost goes down, but she saves it with a split second. And has that put pay to the Italians' gold medal chances just on the breakaway of the closing pitch? And Goggia has lost it. Almost down and out completely. Big drama here in Marybelle. The surprise of the race so far. An error on the last roller, the last breakaway on the Stad Summit. The doubt from Goggia. 
It's just the end of the Prakut turn. That was a heavy head getting thrown down. She stayed focused in the performance. Hopefully we'll get to see it in slow-mo. The entrance onto the stad. We finally get the replay that we're looking for, Finley. Did she straddle? Oh, that could well be a DQ, well spotted. I think the inside ski, when she's can capitalise on a few pre-race nerves from many. This is the Olympic downhill champion. This is the defending world champion, Corinne Suter. To be honest, many of us thought that she wouldn't make these championships. She took a big crash in Cortina D'Ampezzo. It was downhill five of six leading into these championships. We're delighted to have her back. But Finley, is she back to her best in the biggest downhill of the tour to date. She seems very focused at this moment in time, 500s up and how aerodynamic that position is, shoulders low and moving with the terrain. Every movement is ahead of the, the, the snow line. working well with the mountain. Ooh, just gets a little straight legged and open off the third of the rollers in Prakua. Now into Goulet, out of the sunlight, into the shade. Quick adjustment and now prepare for the high speed closeout. 0.14. Can Corinne Suter stay high early, clean in the line and steal the gold from Yasmin Fleury? The defense Ending champion looking to equal Maria Valita, who did the double in the 80s, and she's missed it. Oh! Suta, after a question mark against her name as to if she was even racing here, puts in a now just minus four to minus three, top to bottom. Let's go to the American, Breezy Johnson. The USA haven't won the Women's World Championship gold since Lindsay Vonn, but she won it here in France in Val d'Isère back in 2009. Such a shame for Johnson, who took three podiums on the Women's Downhill Tour of 2022, then crashed, then spent most of this season getting her confidence flight. back. More control. Oh, again, down. and Breezy Johnson's gone down with the inside shoulder. The ski slide from underneath. A DNF for the American racer. She got a little bit tense after the first mistake, stiff in the shoulders. And then the 27-year-old goes down on the entrance to the Prakua left turn. Congratulations. Uh, a dream come true. Uh, the perfect day, the perfect run. Uh, everything was just perfect today. Yeah, I I really don't know what to say. I, I think I still can believe it. It's, it's, it's just amazing. And also with Corinne on, on the podium, also last year in Garmisch, we shared that. But here, now, it's unbelievable. How does it sound being a world champion? Unreal. <laughs> Unreal. I don't know. So many days away and coming back to claim a silver delighted champion representing Switzerland Jasmine Fleury but it's Jasmine Fleury taking full advantage of what we're starting to discover as the favorable snow conditions for the early bib numbers I love the way she executed her skiing skills on the racetrack as well taking the gold for the Swiss team their first of these championships and a first major eyes to the right. Our three medalists in the World Championship downhill for 2023. Jasmine Fleury takes gold. Nina Ortlieb, silver. Another skier with a great return from injury. And Corinne Suter, the Olympic and defending champion, has to settle for the bronze in 2023. Stepping aside for the youngster, not only winning her first world championship race, her first medal and her first major win on the FIS ski racing circuit.